guys, it's Deidre from Our Upcycled Life and welcome to my channel. If you like thrifting, DIYs, repurposing, you've come to the right place and we'd love to have you follow along. So make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss any great content. Today I have finally have a video on how you can use your inkjet printer with Mod Podge. There's a few little tricks and a few little techniques, but it's definitely doable. And today I'm going to teach you how to do that with your inkjet printer at home so you don't have to buy a laser jet printer. Not everybody wants to invest in a laser jet printer if you're only gonna use it now and then. Um, I use mine every day, but a lot of you don't, and you have an inkjet printer. So, I'm gonna show you how you can use your inkjet printer to do picture and graphic transfers, simple, easy. Okay, let's get started. For today's project, I'm going to use these scrap pieces of wood that I've stained. I'm going to be turning them into shelf sitters. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give each of them a coat of my homemade chalk paint. I always like to paint underneath any projects that I'm doing a Mod Podge transfer on because if you don't, you'll be able to see the wood through when you apply it onto the canvas or the wood. Now I've just printed off these two pictures of my husband and I from recent camping trips on our basic inkjet printer. It's an HP, it's base model, not fancy at all. My husband and I love camping in the outdoors and I'm going to make these into little shelf sitters to put in our camper. The graphic that I wanted to make for this set, I wanted to print it off on a piece of aged paper. I coffee stained it, dried it, and then put it into my printer and printed off the graphic. I'll put a link below in the description for how I make this paper. And these are the three pieces that I'm going to use on the wood. My two photos and my one graphic printed off on the aged paper. Now I wanted to give the two photos that I printed out a little bit of an aged look too, like I did this graphic. So I'm taking some of my leftover coffee stain and I'm just going to dab it around the edges of the photo just to give it that aged look also. Make sure you don't get it on any of the photo so you don't run any of the ink. You don't have to do any of these steps on your photos. I'm just trying to get more of a rustic look for the project when it's all completed. If any of you are interested, my husband and I, last spring when COVID started, we took on a project of renovating a vintage pop-up camper and we made a whole playlist of how we uh, took the steps to fix it up to where it is now. So if any of you are interested, you can go and have a look and watch our episodes from that adventure. Now the first step to having a successful inkjet transfer is to put it in the oven on 200 degrees for 10 minutes. This will dry the ink and bond it into the paper so it doesn't run when you introduce the Mod Podge to it. And this will also dry the coffee stain that I put around the outside of the photos. And I also don't think that I mentioned that I'm just using plain computer paper. This is just the cheapest computer paper that you can buy from Amazon. Okay, these have been in the oven for 10 minutes and they've dried and the edges have kind of curled up a little bit. So what I like to do is put it between two pieces of parchment paper and then I'm gonna take my iron on the sec number six setting with no steam and I'm just gonna flatten them out so they're nice and flat and they're easier to work with on my project. The next step is hairspray. What you're going to do is you're gonna seal those two photos and those graphics with a spray of hairspray. Now you don't wanna make it soaking wet, you just wanna spray it so it's just damp on the top of the photos. And of course now I'm spraying it and the photos are flying all over. I probably should have just done one at a time. This is just another step to ensure that that ink is sealed right into that paper. So when you put the Mod Podge on it, it doesn't run or streak. I also like to flip them over and put a light spray on the back of the graphics and the photos. 
I printed off a fourth graphic so I could show you this other method. Another method that you can try after you've taken it out of the oven for the 10 minutes at 200 degrees is you can put a coat of Mod Podge on top of the graphic or the photo and that will also seal it in if you don't want to do the hairspray. I found both of these methods work just as good. Now you're going to let that Mod Podge that you put on the top dry thoroughly. And once it's dry, you can cut it out to the size that you need for your project. Okay, the chalk paint has completely dried on these wooden blocks and I'm gonna give them a real good sand all around the edges just to give it a nice distressed look. Now we're ready to put on the three pieces that I used the hairspray technique on. I'm going to use my Mod Podge in a matte finish. You don't have to use a matte, you can also use a gloss if that's what you have on hand. You're going to flip your graphic over to the back side and you're going to put a liberal amount of Mod Podge on the back of that graphic just kind of from edge to edge side to side you don't want to put a whole bunch on it you don't want it all gobby and thick you want a nice thin layer um, covering the whole piece of paper I find if you put it on too thick you will get bubbles and you will get wrinkles Then you're going to flip it over, place it right where you want it, make sure it's centered, make sure it's even, and then you're going to just take your fingers and just print it, press it down gently, make sure you get out all the little wrinkles, all the little air bubbles. You don't want to press too hard, you just want to take your fingertips and just gently rub over the whole piece of paper. And as you can see, it went on nice and flat and smooth. And now I'm going to do the other two photos that I also used the hairspray technique on. Now this is the graphic that I put the Mod Podge on the top. You're going to use the exact same method as you did with the hairspray. You're just going to put a liberal amount of Mod Podge all over the paper, spread it from corner to corner, not too thick because if you do put it too thick you'll get lots of wrinkles and bubbles and spread it out and then you're going to flip it over and press it down on the wood and press out all the little wrinkles, all the little bubbles, and make sure it's laying very flat on the piece of wood. And it laid down nice and flat with no bubbles and no wrinkles. Now you're gonna let everything completely dry. Now we're ready to put the top coat on these. You're just gonna take your Mod Podge and just Put a light thin coat all over the whole top of the photo. Now you don't want to put too much on this, less is more. You want just a nice light coat just to seal it. If you put it on too thick, it will bubble up and it will wrinkle again. As far as using the hairspray method or the Mod Podge method, I actually haven't really found there was that much of a difference and they both worked really well for me. So you could try both and see which one you liked best and then let me know in the comments. I haven't found doing this technique to have any problems with any of my ink running or um, streaking at all. Now I did do a tutorial on comparing an inkjet printer and a laser jet printer with the reverse graphic transfer and that was really interesting too. Um, I did have a little bit of fading and a little bit of the graphics 
rubbing off when I did that technique, but it still looked really good when I was done. So I'll put a link to that tutorial and you can watch that afterwards uh, and then you can probably try that technique with your inkjet printer at home. And another little trick is get a piece of saran wrap and if you do have any bubbles or any wrinkles that do show up when you're putting this Mod Podge on, just press them down with the saran wrap. It won't stick to the paper and it won't stick to the Mod Podge and it won't make your fingers all goopy. Now this step is completely optional. I just like to seal all of my projects with some Varathane. This is water-based, matte finish. I've let the Mod Podge completely dry and I'm just going to put a light coat of this Varathane over the whole picture. It just gives it a little bit more durability and it's easier to dust and it seals it perfectly. This product is also non-yellowing so you don't need to worry about your projects discoloring. And now here's another tip. This is the block that I use the Mod Podge technique on, not the hairspray. I have not tried this technique using the hairspray. It might work fine. I was just afraid that it might go sticky and gummy, but you're going to set your iron at six and then you're just gently gonna press down and that Mod Podge will melt and it will get rid of all your bubbles and wrinkles. If you've used this technique with the hairspray, let me know if it worked for you. I also wouldn't try this method if you've put the Varathane on the top. And I love these. These turned out amazing. I can't wait to put them in my camper. I'm actually going to probably start using my inkjet printer more. I didn't have any wrinkles, any bubbles, and my ink after using these techniques never ran, never streaked. So get that inkjet printer out and try this technique with Mod Podge. I've had so many people asking me to make this video, so I hope I've answered all of your questions on how to use an inkjet printer to do your Mod Podge transfer method. Thanks for watching and have a great day.